Thalacrosmilus is an extinct genus of saber-toothed metharian mammals that inhabited South America from the late Miocene to Pliocene epochs. Though Thylacrosmilus looks similar to the saber-toothed cats, it was not a felid like the well-known North American Smilodont, but a Sporosodont, a group closely related to marsupials, and only superficially resembled other saber-toothed mammals due to convergent evolution. Thylacrosmilus had a seriously huge head, way bigger than the rest of its body, which makes it tough to figure out exactly how big this beast was. Based on what scientists have pieced together, it likely weighed between 180 to 260 pounds, 80 to 120 kilograms, about the size of a big jaguar today, making it one of the largest carnivore marsupials ever found. It stood around 2 feet, 0.6 meters tall, and was about 4 feet, 1.2 meters long. But the most jaw-dropping feature, those massive saber teeth. We're talking long, thin, wicked canines, built for slicing and dicing, and covered in enamel that was about 0.25 millimeters thick. Not much is known about its other teeth, like the incisors, because the fossils didn't hold up well. But we do know that animals with saber teeth often have some missing or worn down teeth elsewhere. Unlike the famous Smilodon from North America, Thylacosmilus had these cool flanges on its lower jaw that protected its saber teeth when its mouth was closed. In 1926, the Marshall Field Paleontological Expeditions collected mammal fossils from the Intunzinga Formation in Catamarca Province, northern Argentina. Three of these specimens were identified as belonging to a new type of marsupial related to the Borhenids and were reported to the Paleontological Society of America in 1928, though they hadn't been officially named yet. In 1933, American paleontologist Elmer Riggs gave the new genus the name Thylacosmilus, based on these specimens. He also named two species, Thylacosmilus atrox and Thylacosmilus lentus, while mentioning that a full description would be published later. The name Thylacosmilus means pouch knife, and atrox means cruel. Riggs found the genus so unique that he created a new subfamily within Borhedindae Thylacosmilinae, calling it one of the most unique flesh-eating mammals of all times. The main specimen for Thylacosmilus atrox was collected by Riggs and his assistant. It includes a skull with most of the teeth on the right side still intact, a separate left canine, some jaw fragments, and parts of the skeleton like a humerus, broken radius, and femur. The second Thylacosmilus atrox specimen came with a solid set of bones, skull, jaw, vertebrae, femur, tibia, fibula, and some foot bones. It was about 25% smaller than the first specimen, so it might have been a young adult just getting its start. This one was dug up by Robert Thorne. Now, for Thylacosmilus lentus, the main fossil was a partial skull with some teeth still hanging on the right side. Size-wise, it matched up pretty well with the smaller Thylacosmilus atrox. Rudolf Stahlecker found it just a few miles away from the other specimen. Both fossils ended up at the Field Museum in Chicago, but the Thylacosmilus lentus skull was later shipped off to the Museum of La Plata. By 1934, Riggs had fully broken down what made the Thylacosmilus tick. Comparing these finds with other fossils in the area and similar Borhedonids, that's when this saber-toothed beast really got its moment in the scientific spotlight. Since then, more Thylacosmilus fossils have been uncovered. In 1939, Riggs and Brian Patterson identified a canine previously thought to belong to another species as part of Thylacosmilus. In 1965, they found a part of a skull and jaw. In 1972, Jorge Zetti proposed that Thylacosmilus atrox and Thylacosmilus lentus might be the same species, a theory Larry Marshall supported in 1976 suggesting the differences were likely due to age and sex. Marshall also questioned how two closely related species in the same area could specialize so similarly, even hinting that hyena dops might be connected, though that couldn't be confirmed. The term saber-tooth refers to different extinct predators that all evolved long, sharp canine teeth. This includes animals from various groups, like Gorgonopsia, Thylacosmilidae, Macheroidinae, Nimravidae, 
Barbara Felidae, and Michiro Donate. Recent biomechanical studies have estimated that bite force of Thylacosmilus atrox in its maximum gape was about 38 newton, 8.5 pound of force, way weaker than that of a leopard. This suggests that its jaw muscles weren't really the heavy hitters when it came to taking down prey. Its skull, though it was built similarly to Smilodon's, designed to handle the loads from powerful neck muscles. Along with evidence of strong, flexible forelimb muscles and other skeletal adaptions for stability, this points to the idea that Thylacosmilus is Atrox's hunting method likely involved immobilizing prey and then delivering deep, precise bites to soft tissue, all powered by its neck. Some folks have suggested that this specialized hunting style might mean it also practiced more parental care than modern marsupial predators. The reasoning is that this killing technique would have been something only fully grown adults could pull off, thanks to their developed teeth and grasping skills. Younger ones might have taken time to learn how to do it, but there's no solid fossil evidence to back this up, and we don't see this kind of cooperative behavior in modern marsupials. In 1988, Juan Quiroga did a deep dive into the brain structure of Thylacosmilus's using skull casts. He checked out two specimens. One was incomplete, and the other was a full cast. The study showed that about 20% of its brain was for body movement, 18% was for vision, and 7% for hearing. Compared to other marsupials, Thylacosmilus had more brain power for its mouth and jaw area. When comparing it to a related species, it had a smaller brain but adapted its brain areas to match its hunting style. In 2010, another study compared Thylacosmilus to other carnivores and found that, even though it had some odd features, it didn't really hold back its evolution just because it was a marsupial. It could have evolved in similar ways to placental predators like dogs. Fast forward to 2020, when a study pointed out that its skull was pretty different from saber-toothed eutherians. It didn't have some features like fused jaws or sharpened scissors and its teeth weren't built for shearing meat. This led researchers to think that maybe Thylacosmilus was an expert at munching on the soft insides of its prey. But then, in 2021, another study came out saying that it probably killed the same way as other saber-tooths. Its skull had features that helped it bite hard, open wide, and use its strong neck to tear into prey, just like Smilodon did. A study on isotope ratios found that Thylacosmilus mainly hunted herbivores in open areas, likely because of the rise of grasslands in drier conditions in South America millions of years ago. Usually, we expect carnivores to have their eyes facing forward, which helps with depth perception. This allows them to judge distance and see in 3D, making it easier to lock in on prey. When the left and right vision fields overlap, the brain gets that 3D info and boom, the predator can track its target more accurately. But with Thylacosmilus, things were a little different. Its eyes were more like those of herbivores, like cows or horses, which only see in 2D. This raised some questions. If Thylacosmilus was such a hardcore carnivore, eating mostly meat, could it even see in 3D? After checking out the scans, researchers found that Thylacosmilus had a clever way of adapting. Even with its eyes set wide apart, it positioned them outward and tilted them vertically, which gave it about a 70-degree overlap in its vision, kind of like a cat's. This was enough to help it track prey like a pro. But why did Thylacosmilus have such strange eye placement in the first place? It all comes down to those massive, ever-growing saber teeth. These teeth pushed deeper into the skull over time, which messed with the skull shape and forced the eyes to shift. This displacement gave Thylacosmilus its wide-set eyes. Scientists have dug deep into the musculature and movement of Thylacosmilus, and the results are wild. Back in 1976 and 1978, William Turnbull got creative. He used plasticine to rebuild the saber-toothed jaw muscles over a skull cast, following the fossil's muscle scars. Then, he made a rubber model and crunched the numbers to see how its muscles stacked up against today's carnivores. His big takeaway? The jaw closing muscles were pretty standard. Not shrimpy like those in some saber-toothed cats. Even crazier. He found that Thylacosmilus wasn't relying on these muscles to use its epic sabers. Instead, 
It was all about those beasty neck muscles and the head flexing move, mixing stabbing and slashing techniques. Basically, a mashup of Dirk Tooth and Scimitar Saber action. Fast forward to 2004, and Argot dropped some comparative analysis. Turns out, the base of Thylacosmilus' skull had rugged crests where neck flexor muscles anchored, boosting bite power. Its humerus upper arm bone had a massive deltopectoral crest, making up 60% of its length. Translation? Big muscles for wrangling heavy prey. Oddly, the humerus lacked an intepicondylar foramen, a feature usually tied to limb flexibility in runners and hunters. Instead, Thylacosmilus had powerful abductor muscles, meaning it was built for grappling, not sprinting. Oh, in its spine? While most lumbar vertebrae are missing, the last two suggest a stiff, stabilized back. Think Smilodon, built for raw power, not the bendy, agile moves you'd see in its closest relatives. Thylacosmilus lived in South America, and most likely preferred savanna and sparsely forested areas where it could capture its prey more easily, compared to more open locations. Additionally, the chances of the species facing aggressive competition were higher in the open fields. The greatest threat to the Thylacosmilus was the forest racids, terror birds. They were vicious and aggressive prey hunters. Although they didn't prey on the Thylacosmilus, they competed with them for food. It was at a disadvantage because it was mainly an ambush predator. This forced the animal to stick to areas with trees and vegetation cover, while the terror birds were free to take down prey anywhere. Although older references have often stated that Thylacosmilus became extinct due to the competition with the more competitive saber-toothed cat Smilodon during the Great American Interchange, newer studies have shown this is not the case. Thylacosmilus died out during the Pliocene, 3.6 to 2.58 million years ago, whereas saber-toothed cats are not known from South America until the Middle Pleistocene, 781,000 to 126,000 years ago. As a result, the last appearance of Thylacosmilus is separated from the first appearance of Smilodon by over one and a half a million years. Thylacosmilus had some seriously impressive, saber-like canines that kept growing throughout its life. These teeth didn't just stop, they arched through the skull, even reaching above the eye sockets. Compared to other saber-toothed predators, Thylacosmilus was next level in terms of specialization. Its hunting lifestyle led to a streamlined set of teeth, with some reduced or completely lost. The canines were a standout feature, longer, slimmer, and triangular in shape, unlike the oval-shaped fangs seen in carnivores, like Smilodon. At first, researchers thought these massive fangs meant Thylacosmilus didn't even need incisors, unlike other saber-toothed predators that kept theirs. But where patterns on the lower canines suggest otherwise, it probably had incisors, though they've yet to be found in fossils. Poor preservation and the lack of intact premaxillae have kept those a mystery. The lack of smilus showed clear evidence of reduced post-canine teeth. These teeth had only a single tearing cusp, continuing a trend seen in other sporacodonts, where grinding surfaces in the premolars and molars were largely lost. Its canines were hypsodont, deeply rooted in the skull, with more than half the tooth embedded in the alveoli, which extended over the brain case. These massive fangs were safeguarded by a large symphonial flange and driven by powerful neck muscles, enabling forceful downward and backward head movements during attacks. Interestingly, the canines had a very thin enamel layer, just 0.25 mm thick at most, and the thinness remained consistent along their length. Since the teeth had open roots and grew continuously, they avoided the abrasion marks often found on the enamel of other saber-toothed predators, like Smilodon. Instead, the sharp serrations on the canines were kept in shape through wear against the lower canines, a process called thigosis. The upper portion of the maxilla was notably textured with deep furrows and pits, likely related to an extensive blood vessel network. This feature hints at a fascinating possibility. The upper maxilla may have been covered by a keratinous structure, 
potentially resembling a horn covering. While the postcranial skeleton of Thylacosmilus is incomplete, the available fossils reveal traits that it shared with saber-toothed cats through convergent evolution. Its cervical neck vertebrae were particularly strong, somewhat resembling those of Machyrodontinine cats, and had well-developed neural and ventral processes, a feature also seen in other Borheanoids. The lumbar lower back vertebrae were short and rigid, offering more stability compared to those of Prothokinus. The limb bones, including the humerus and femur, were extremely robust, designed to handle greater forces than those faced by modern big cats. The humerus, in particular, shows adaptations for powerful pectoral and deltoid muscles, which would have been crucial not only for capturing prey, but also for absorbing the impact of a high-speed strike during an attack. The hind limbs of Thylacosmilus were strong, but not built for speed. Its sturdy femur had a large ridge lower down for muscle attachment, and its short tibia and plantigrade flat-footed feet suggest it wasn't a runner. Instead, this predator likely relied on sneaking up on its prey. The hips were flexible enough to allow some movement, and Thylacosmilus might have been able to stand on its hind legs, similar to animals like Prothokinus and Borhenia. Unlike big cats and other saber-toothed predators, though, its claws couldn't retract. The similarities between Thylacosmilus and thylacine, sharp teeth, predatory behavior, and even their marsupial nature, are results of convergent evolution. This means they independently evolve similar features to adapt to their environments, despite being on different evolutionary branches. Thylacosmilus and thylacine come from entirely separate branches of the marsupial family tree. Thylacosmilus belonged to the Sporacidonta, an extinct order of carnivore marsupials unique to South America. Sporacidons are more distantly related to modern marsupials than thylacine, and represent a lineage that evolved specialized predatory traits millions of years before thylacine existed. Thylacine, on the other hand, was part of the order Dasyromorphia, which includes living carnivore marsupials, such as Tasmanian devils and quolls. It was a relatively recent species, surviving until the 20th century, whereas Thylacosmilus went extinct around 3 million years ago. Thylacosmilus was a powerhouse of a predator, built like a saber-toothed cat with some serious muscle. Its elongated upper canines extended well past its lower jaw and were reinforced by a bony sheath for protection, a design that screamed built for business. This creature didn't mess around. Its body was stocky and all about strength, with powerful forelimbs, a rigid back, and massive neck muscles perfectly tuned to drive those iconic saber teeth into prey. On the other hand, the thylacine was a sleeker, more agile predator that looked like a striped dog or wolf. It had a lean, slender body, a long snout, and a coat of yellowish fur with distinctive dark stripes along its back and tail. Unlike Thylacosmilus, it didn't go for dramatic weapons. Instead, its teeth were more practical, adapted for cutting and crushing, making it better suited for a variety of smaller prey. In short, Thylacosmilus was all about brute force and precision strikes, while Thylacine relied on finesse and versatility. Thylacosmilus roamed prehistoric South America during the Miocene to Pliocene epochs, a time when the continent was an evolutionary island brimming with unique, often bizarre creatures. Its hunting grounds included open plains and woodlands, where it targeted large, slow-moving herbivores, like toxodonts and ground sloths. Meanwhile, thylacine called Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea home, thriving in forests, grasslands, and scrublands. Thylacosmilus went extinct around 3 million years ago, likely due to environmental changes and competition following the Great American Biotic Interchange, when placental predators entered South America. Thylacine survived until 1936, but human hunting, habitat loss, and competition with introduced species like dogs led to its extinction. Efforts to de-extinct the thylacine are underway, while Thylacosmilus remains a subject of paleontological curiosity.